The next of our guests is Tizzy. So Tizzy Sylvester from Frederick Goff School. Tizzy's the assistant head teacher and she's going to be taking us through a bit of a journey from the past, the present and the future. Um, yeah, no pressure, but it's been it was lovely to hear from you at the panel and um, I will hand straight over to you, but obviously I'm here in the background if you need me. Lovely, thank you very much Lucy. Okay. So my name is Tizzy Sylvester, I am an assistant head teacher at Frederick Goff School in charge of the digital, digital curriculum, teaching and learning, business studies and ICT. So I'm going to talk to you about our journey in terms of where we started in lockdown one, and where we are currently with lockdown two or three as it's now known and what we're going to do in the future and having seen what George has just presented I'm now thinking of changing what we're going to do in the future to link to what we've just seen so I'll be in touch George because it looks fantastic so just to tell you a little bit about ourselves to begin with so I'm just going to present my screen to you so you can see a bit more about us okay so we are Frederick Off School. We are the largest school in North Lincolnshire. We have about 1,000 children on site and we are located in South Scunthorpe. We have 40% of our pupils come from households with high levels of deprivation. We're a very inclusive school. We make sure and we believe that every child should have a good education, has the right to succeed, and we break down those barriers to learning to make sure that our children are able to be successful in their future. Most of our children go to one of the two local colleges when they leave ourselves, or they go on to an apprenticeship locally. British Steel is our major apprenticeship provider, it's just down the road from our school. And we like our motto, try your best, be nice and you'll do well. And I think that is just really valuable to say that actually if you are a good person and you try hard, you will do well in the future. So that's a bit about our school. So in lockdown one, when that first happened, we had conversations about what on earth were we gonna do? We used the assignment manager in Frog a little bit, not particularly, but we did use it a little bit, and we decided that was the route that we would go down. So before lockdown one hit, we actually decided that what we would do was create several, and I mean several, different how-to guides. We had a bit of an issue whereby some of our members of staff were great on Frog, they knew exactly what to do, they could set assignments already, but then equally we had the opposite side of that where some of our members of staff hadn't even logged into Frog. So we followed our normal timetable the students did and we continued setting assignments using the assignment manager on a Sunday and students then completed them in line with their timetables. That went really well. Um, we decided that we would launch Fantastic Fridays. So they used to happen in school. We'd have breakfast together as a staff body. It was voluntary, so people would meet for breakfast if they could and we'd share a snippet of teaching and learning that had worked well in the week or something we'd tried in a group that we'd found had been successful. So we shared them normally in school, but we relaunched them virtually when we were in lockdown one. So staff would join our virtual meetings and we would share different things. So we looked at how to talk over a PowerPoint. We also focused on using the mark book in Frog because people weren't familiar with that. We also looked at how do you mark on Frog? How do you even know if a student's completed any work? So a whole host of different things that we did on a Friday morning before school started, um, and they were really successful. We found because they were virtual, some people who couldn't come because of childcare issues normally were able to attend, and they were recorded as well so we could share them with all of our staff if they couldn't make it for any reason. We launched a tracking service, so our LSAs rang every single week to talk to the same family, which was fantastic. I think the parents really appreciated the fact they had the one-to-one -one with um, the same person, so someone to talk to, really. So every child then was tracked, and any data, any interventions that needed to happen were shared with their pastoral teams so that we were able to see exactly what our students were up to, how they were progressing, and if they needed any support. Towards the end of lockdown one, we launched Q&A pages because we noticed that students wanted to just have a chat, really, ask a question to their tutor team or to their subject teachers. So we launched a Q&A page and that actually meant that there was a conversation able to flow between the children and an, and an adult as well from not within their, um, within their home. Carrying on, we noticed that actually by the first week in 72% of our students were engaging with Frog in an average week. We were really pleased with that and it continued to grow every single week as well. So more and more students were actually engaging with their learning through that day. We also found that 85% of our students engaged with our virtual platform 
whether that was using the Q&A process that we put into place or equally just messaging, using the messaging service as well. So we're really pleased with how much our students are engaging with our, um, with our assignments. We did find some of them decided that they would do more work Monday to Thursday and then not have to do the work on the Friday, but they got their work done within their time frame as well, so they could then have Friday afternoons off when the sun was shining, which was absolutely fine. We shared all of our positive feedback actually as well, because we did numerous different surveys. We quite, got quite good at doing surveys in fact, and we managed to share that with people as well. So anything that was positive, we put onto the Frog page and our Facebook pages as well. And we put our positive stories on Frog. You can see there's some examples of some good work that students have completed during lockdown one. And it was just really nice to actually share some positivity around with our students too. I think at that point, everybody was doing Joe Wicks, we put the Joe Wicks system and um, PE sessions onto our frog page. The students could take part in those as well. Um, and we came second in the Frog World Championships. Massive accolade to ourselves. Certainly when we were setting those low state quizzes that Joe was talking about earlier, so we set them so that then students could engage and get instant feedback, which actually saved our teachers time as well because they could set the quiz, it self-marks, and then they were able to... Um, to complete things, so that was a real win for us, and we're really, really proud of that. So then we got to the point at the end of lockdown one when we suddenly thought, okay, well, what are we going to do with this now? And we spoke to Graham, who was fantastic, and thought about creating live lessons. To be honest with you, I don't think we'd ever, personally didn't think we'd ever use these live lessons, how wrong I was, but we made live lessons for every single child just before we um, had the summer break. So. Then we came back to school and decided we would serve every child to find out what the provision was like at home. Did they have a computer? Did they have a Chromebook? Did they have a tablet? Thankfully, we did that at the exactly right time as well. So we we're really pleased that we did that at that point in time. So we bought a load of devices. Um, we also bought a visualizer for every member of staff. We equally bought headsets for our members of staff as well. So we bought lots of different devices for everybody. We had a conversation then with our middle leaders about what do we have a lockdown timetable? Do we change our timetables and, and have one in case and making sure that things are a little bit easier in terms of when we teach certain things? Maybe we teach 100 plus children in one go. So we then coded that as well, so it was in the background ready. But if I'm honest, I still at that point didn't necessarily think we would use it. And then, here we go again, it's Christmas, we've just got back into lockdown and suddenly, there was that bit of fear. I told our head that we had these live lessons, everything was going to work, but I'm certainly sure the night before we went live to 1,328 children, I didn't sleep. So we have all of our lessons on Frog, so every child has an individual um, link, an individual bespoke page that tells them their room, which was really helpful in September, so they went straight to their bubble rooms. They have their bubble rooms on there, and they also have their links if they've got options as well. And all of our lessons are live within Frog, so via Google Meet, but sat in Frog. I have to say, Graham was amazing, and he coded it for us. And I didn't think I'd ever be able to do it, but I can now write some code, not as good as anybody else's, but I can get by myself now as well. Our IT team have been invaluable. They have managed to up attendance for us, for our students, and break down any barriers that any child had got with their IT. We've given out 400 devices. It's going to be a bit of a nightmare getting 400 devices getting back into school. I'm sure the reception team will hate us at that point when we're trying to get these things back. But we wanted to ensure that there were no barriers, whether that's um, year seven and eight using tablets that we've provided or Chromebooks for nine through to 11. We wanted to make sure students were able to engage really swiftly with their learning and these live lessons that were in place. So as I said earlier, we changed our CPD sessions. We moved from Rose and Shine to online survival, online teaching. We wanted to make sure that if we were teaching these five lessons a day online, because we decided not to follow the lockdown timetable, but actually continue with our normal timetable. How can you survive five hours on a machine? What could we do? I mean, the irony was that our online session was actually online, but we wanted long term to make and share strategies for survival. We've had a huge amount of attendance this, this time, actually. 94% of our students have engaged with our online lessons, which I'm really, really impressed about. So we track every single lesson. And as I mentioned earlier, we've used Google extensions, several, specifically the ones you can see, but just to make sure that our students were able to, our staff were able to find ways they could reduce their workload, but equally at the same time, the students could 
to could benefit from these various different things that we'd found as well and wanted to share that really quickly. We have relaunched our weekly check-ins. The phone call started again. The LSA team have been brilliant. They have started phoning the same parents again um, to make sure there's communication between us and them. We also did a staff survey. So any issues that we had, however small they or large these things were, we met individually with anybody with an issue. So I think I dealt with several members of staff and it was an IT issue. So we had one-to-one -one so that I could talk through what the concerns were and then hopefully resolve them as well. Bit nerve wracking when you're the IT person because suddenly you're thinking, well, I hope I do know the answer. And actually then what we did was check back in with those members of staff a week later as well, just to make sure that actually what we'd said was the solution was actually working for them. We also launched our staff sanity group. So we then made sure that staff knew if you're not teaching, go out and you want to, go get some fresh air. And it's absolutely fine to do so. Please go and get some fresh air and have a walk if you want. And so we launched our um, a sanity group to make sure that staff were able to log their walks or runs or bikes, whatever they were doing. And roughly speaking now, we nominate our students every single week. So roughly there's about 1,250 nominations a week for students and they get put into an Amazon voucher um, gift box as well. We pick out winners every single week too. You'll see on the screen, um, as an SLT, we wrote to our members of teams. So we wrote to people in our departments and our links and then personally wrote them a, com a card for um, February half term. They went home in the post. And then at the end of the week, we sent them a care package as well, just to say thank you for the amazing work they've done during this lockdown. So that was quite nice for everybody to receive as well. And then moving forward. So in terms of what we've learned, and I certainly think George's ideas are going to come into their own here as well. We're going to launch PrEP from September. So PrEP is essentially going to be a, a platform that students will use um, for their after school work. So currently, um, homework is sporadic in our school. There, isn't, there is a plan. I'm not sure we stick to it 100%. So what we have found is we have some lazy boys and we have a culture whereby they hit year 10 and 11 and suddenly there's all this work they've got to do, they've got to revise, they've got to be able to recall information and it's not their norm because we haven't instilled that culture in year 7 and 8. So we're going to hopefully change that from September, launching prep. So the idea is that students will do about 30 to 40 minutes a night. They will be responsible for their own learning and their own time. So the assignments will be set on a Sunday. They can choose when they want to do them, whether they do them all on a Saturday, they do them through the week, but they might have extracurricular activities. So we're going to try and balance it really and install some independent skills in them so that they become more confident, more resilient, but more importantly, GCSE ready. So by the time they get to GCSEs, they know some skills in terms of how to revise. They know the different ideas they've got. They, they can recall information, they're exam ready. And with a focus that we're going to change our culture of boys and hopefully then with some of them, they will become more ready for their exams, their GCSEs as when it happens for them. So PrEP is our system that I'm going to launch from September. It doesn't look as good as George's, but I'm going to steal his answers and his information. And that's where we're going to move forward, because what we don't want to lose is all that wonderful skills and upskilling we've done with our teachers and our students. We want that to continue for the future. And that's it. Tizzy, thank you so much. It's been lovely again to just hear from you that um, those moments of vulnerable vulnerability when you were you know, the night before you're launching to all of those kids and, and, and the change from being so vulnerable to now saying, actually, we're going to address this, we're going to address these technologies and we're going to bring it back into the classroom. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly there was that, that there was a nervous moment of is it going to work? But I just think how far we've come from lockdown one when we just set assignments that don't get me wrong, we're amazing. But now that live teaching that's going on to those students is just incredible. And what they've got from it is absolutely fantastic as well. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for staying with us and, and sharing this with the audience today. And we'll make sure that uh, obviously you, you get to steal George's stuff. They're definitely lazy, Steve, not lazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take care. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.